there's scraping, there's burning, there's freezing, there's zapping, there's shaving, scooping, punching, excising, lasering. There is a laundry list of destructive treatment modalities at our disposal for tackling unwanted lumps, bumps, rejuvenating the surface of the skin, and importantly, for tackling those pesky skin cancers and pre-skin cancers. Today, we're gonna talk about photodynamic therapy, what it is, its pros, its cons, what it's used to treat, and what one might expect with this treatment modality. Photodynamic therapy is highly useful for treating actinic keratoses, which are a type of pre-skin cancer. Those rough, gritty, pink bumps in areas where you've gotten a lot of sun exposure. More common in people who have a paler skin type who have seen a lot of sun throughout their lifetime. Photodynamic therapy also is useful for treating squamous cell carcinoma that is thin in the skin. Ooh, I made a rhyme. Also, basal cell carcinoma that is pretty thin in thickness. Outside of treating skin cancers, photodynamic therapy can be a highly useful tool for getting rid of other unwanted issues like warts. Photodynamic therapy can even be employed to clear up acne. It's also used for rejuvenation purposes. All right, now that you know what this is used to tackle, what the heck is photodynamic therapy anyway? Photodynamic therapy involves employing a photosensitizing agent that localizes specifically in abnormal cells. Coupled with oxygen and light, this results in a reaction that creates reactive oxygen species that damage and destroy structures in the problematic pre-cancer and cancerous cells. Essentially, it is a way to selectively destroy skin cancer cells, cells that are harboring wart virus, to tackle acne. This is a photochemical reaction. You've got a chemical and you've got light and you have a reaction. Outside of treating cancers, it works to treat acne because the photosensitizing agent kind of localizes in the pilosebaceous unit, AKA within your pore, and it kills off that pesky cutie bacterium acnes that is responsible for acne and also helps to put the sebaceous gland in check. The photosensitizing agent can be delivered to the skin in a variety of ways, just applied directly to the skin, specifically just to the skin problem of concern like the skin cancer. It can be given by mouth or it can be given through an IV. The photosensitizing agent, once administered, concentrates in the cancer cells. However, only in the presence of a specific wavelength of light does the photochemical reaction ensue to damage those cancerous cells. Not all light is created equal. You need light of a specific wavelength in order to trigger the photochemical reaction. We have a variety of tools to deliver light of the wavelength of interest. You can use a laser. You also have LEDs light emitting diodes. And third, you can actually harness daylight to trigger the photochemical reaction. What color of light is used? Blue light, red light, and near infrared. So what might one expect with getting photodynamic therapy? Well, when you go in, your dermatologist will likely be prepping the skin problem of interest in order to get any heaped up dead stuff off so that, the, so that in the case of applying it topically, it has a better chance of localizing to those problematic cells. They might scrape it. They might use salicylic acid or urea in advance to get that dead stuff really thin because as you guys know from my videos on salicylic acid and urea, it helps to exfoliate that dry rough stuff. They might even take a needle and poke little holes in the skin bump of concern. Then the photosensitizing agent would be applied to the skin in the case of topical application. After the photosensitizing agent is delivered, you need to wait usually about three to six hours so that that photosensitizing reagent can concentrate in the cancerous cells in the case of a pre-skin cancer or a cancer or in the case of a wart. It really needs to get in there and concentrate. Then a laser or an LED, some sort of light source is directed to the lesion that has been treated with
with the photosensitizing agent in the case of the topical application. Depending on the light source, this will take anywhere from five to 45 minutes. In the case of daylight, it's typically two hours. After the light source has been delivered, then the treated area is usually covered to protect it from further light. Importantly, this treatment makes the skin very sensitive. If the photosensitizing reagent has been given by mouth or through an IV, you're gonna be photosensitive everywhere, including your eyes. But if it's just applied to the skin, you're going to be photosensitive where it was applied. In some cases, your dermatologist might need to repeat this roughly seven to 10 days later. But what you might expect from this treatment is that once the photochemical reaction ensues, it's basically the equivalent of a sunburn. Rather than being triggered by ultraviolet radiation, however, it is triggered by the photochemical reaction of the photosensitizing agent plus visible light, whether it be from an artificial source or from the sun. But rather than damaging your healthy skin, it damages the problematic skin. Side effects include burning, stinging. The area that is being treated might swell because there is this inflammation coming in to destroy and clear out those problematic cells. The skin can crust over. It can be very itchy. As the skin starts to heal, you're going to likely have some peeling, some flaking. And you have to be careful because as the skin is peeling, flaking, and inflamed, it's a lot more vulnerable to skin infection. So you want to take measures to keep the area protected with physical coverings like a bandage, for example. If the inflammation is too exuberant, there is a risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is more of a risk in people who have a deeper skin tone, but it's definitely something that could happen. Rarely, you might experience temporary hair loss in the treated area. This is because all of that inflammation has a bystander effect on the hair follicles and they're like, um, okay, we're receiving word that it's not time to grow hair. So you might experience temporary hair loss. For example, if you're having this done in the scalp to treat a skin cancer there, a pre-skin cancer or a skin cancer, or maybe you happen to have some other bump that your derm wants to treat in the scalp, you might have a patch of hair loss where you are receiving the treatment. Now, keep in mind, this is only temporary. Your hair will regrow once everything has calmed down and the treatment has been over for some time. It takes time for hair to grow, so you have to be patient. Hair loss is not a common side effect of photodynamic therapy, but it is possible just in the treated area. If you have this done, it's not as though you're going to lose hair all over. And again, it's uncommon. One of the pros of getting photodynamic therapy, specifically for treating pre-skin cancers known as actinic keratoses, it also helps to clear out subclinical lesions, meaning bumps that are lurking within the skin that haven't quite popped up yet. We can't see them with our eyes, but there is sun damage and pre-skin pre cancers waiting to emerge. And if you've ever made an actinic keratosis, you know that you end up having to follow up with your dermatologist for another check, you get more of them, and it's kind of like chasing around when the next one is gonna pop up. A real advantage of photodynamic therapy through something known as field cancerization, you're targeting these subclinical lesions, so you're ultimately going to have fewer pop up down the road. Another advantage of photodynamic therapy is that people note kind of a rejuvenation to their skin. Other pros of photodynamic therapy are that provided it's done appropriately and correctly, there are really no long lasting side effects. Now I did mention it's possible to have some post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. If you get a really exuberant response, but that will clear up with time. So long term side effects are not common. Another advantage specifically with regards to treating cancers is that if need be down the road, you can have that treatment done again. You can have photodynamic therapy as many times to a given spot as necessary. This is in contrast to radiation therapy. Radiation therapy cannot be repeated multiple times because it creates a problem in the skin when you are received too much. Photodynamic therapy is less invasive in contrast to cutting skin cancers out. And it also doesn't require that much time. It's pretty efficient in terms of your time. It's also cost efficient. It's much less expensive in contrast to many other treatment modalities. It's very precise in terms of it really targets problematic cells. That photosensitizing agent goes to the problem cells, not to the healthy cells. And in contrast to excisions or even cryotherapy, there's usually no scarring. The downsides of photodynamic therapy are that it really can only reach where light can reach because it requires light to 
cause that reaction. So it's not gonna be appropriate for cancers that are really deep, that have gotten into organs, or that have spread elsewhere, that have metastasized. But for the most part in dermatology, our skin cancers are at a part of the body of the skin where the light can access. Photodynamic therapy may not be appropriate for people with certain underlying blood disorders. Photodynamic therapy also, unfortunately, can make you sensitive to light for some time. Not permanently, but for some time, and specifically visible light. So you're going to need to take measures to protect your skin from the light, especially if you've received it through an IV or orally, then your body, your eyes are going to remain sensitive. Your skin will remain sensitive, but if you have the photosensitizing agent applied just locally to the skin, you really only need to concern yourself with aggressively protecting that area. You're gonna wanna wear a hat, long sleeves, sun protective clothing. You're going to want to avoid spending time outdoors. You're also going to want to stay away from the beach, from the snow, and from walking on light colored sidewalks because sun is reflected up off those surfaces onto the skin, plus the beach, you know, you've got the sun beating down and reflecting up off the sand, the water. And so it's a lot more exposure of visible light, not the ultraviolet radiation, but visible light. Wearing sunscreen is important because in the case of pre-skin cancers, wearing sunscreen can help cut down on the number of pre-skin cancers you go on to form. However, sunscreen is intended to protect you from ultraviolet radiation. So the photosensitivity that you're going to experience will not be helped by wearing sunscreen. Sunscreens are not going to offer that protection. Now, yes, sunscreens that are tinted with iron oxides can offer some protection against blue light and the visible light wavelength. Also, um, certain newer sunscreen ingredients seem to offer some visible light protection, but not enough to adequately protect or reliably protect, I should say, against the visible light that is going to aggravate your skin, burn, sting in this short-term period where you are more photosensitive. You guys know I'm a huge proponent of at-home treatments with LEDs for hair loss, acne, for uh, rejuvenation, improving collagen, wrinkles, skin smoothness, reducing inflammation in the skin. For example, I often promote the Eye Restore for hair restoration and the uh, Omnilux Contour Mask for photo rejuvenation or the Omnilux Clear Mask for acne. However, if you have gotten photodynamic therapy, keep in mind you can't use these because the medication has made you very sensitive to the wavelengths that these put out and you will have burning in the areas. You know, these devices come with a warning not to use if you have received any kind of photosensitizing medication, this would be a case for not using those devices. Discuss with your doctor when you could resume those devices in the future because it's not a permanent photosensitivity, so eventually you should be able to go back to using those at-home devices, but just keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's everything I wanted to talk about with regards to photodynamic therapy. It's a really great tool for treating pre-skin cancers, skin cancers, acne, and a variety of other inflammatory skin conditions, lumps and bumps. I really hope this video was helpful to you. Now, if you are dealing with skin cancers, I have a whole playlist of skin cancer information, different treatment modalities, different types of skin cancers, even the rarer skin cancers like Merkel cell carcinoma. So check that playlist out. I will link it down below in the description. I really hope this video was informative to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.